Hey there! Have you ever made pancakes? Why, well, sure you have. You know the experience, pancake makers. You're all ready. You got this idea in your head what this pancake's gonna look like. The You get your batter all prepared. You put it on the grill. What happens to the first pancakes that you put on the grill? They look like this, right? It's just... I mean, uh, whoa, there it is. Okay, this is, it's, this is, whoa, like, there's no loft, there's no thickness. The blueberries, the, the blueberries just fall off, <laughs> and, and they're not embedded in this thing. This is, this is a sad pancake. Now, if, if at this point, you thought to yourself, I can't make pancakes. I'm a failure as a pancake maker. You would never get to eat this, this thing of beauty. I mean, look at that. I'm just, right, embedded blueberries. I mean, that's, that's a good pancake right there, right? So the first one's off the grill, and then later on, you get to eat this pancake. Now, if you, if you get, get focused on, on, on this, and you say, I can't make pancakes, you don't make any pancakes, this is not gonna happen. You need to make this in order to make this. This is what happens when you're getting things, your grill's just getting warmed up, and you're trying to figure out, like, is my batter too liquidy? That's what happens with the first pancakes. Guess what? It's the same way with our drawings. It's the same with your drawings. So when you, you're about to bust out your journal on a new day of sketching. Your brain isn't warmed up. Your hand, your pencil, isn't connected with your eye and your brain. And you get to get all those things kind of synced up. If you ever take a figure drawing class, they spend the first half an hour or so just, just making these like 10 second drawings, these quick, rapid things, just to kind of reestablish that connection between your hand and whatever you're drawing. It's it's just the way that our, our, our brains and our bodies work. The first drawings of any day are going to look the funkiest. So, and, and you can see this in, in a single day. And let's, let's, let's take an example. Let's take a look at an example of one of my sketchbooks. And, um, all right. Here we go. And so you are going to go spend um, a lovely day of of drawing of of, of drawing critters uh, you've been out sketching the day before and now the next morning you're making your you're making your drawings well check out this elephant here it's got like some weird kind of chubby cheek thing going on it's it's not this this isn't this isn't the way that I'm seeing the elephant, but this is the way my first sketch came out that day. That morning, let's see. Um, there we go. Um, that morning, this little sooty chat um, was the first sketch of the day. Um, it's a little bit too poofed up back here. Its eyes too close to the 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 front here. There's just some kind of weird things going on on this little sooty chat. Um, so the first few drawings of the day are almost guaranteed to have something coming out on them that if you had do-overs that you would do over. But then what happens is because you are making these sacrificial pancakes, you are warming up, you're warming up your hands. So by the time the eland shows up, you're you're beginning to you're beginning to get it right. You're beginning to kind of okay. Now this is looking like an 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 eland covered with little ox peckers. But to get to here, you had to go to here. You keep sketching that day, right? You come across that pride of lions, and the the first ones. Uh, let's take a look at just the face of this lion. All right. Huh. Okay. Well, then you sketch this lion, 
And then by the time you get onto this line, see that line's working a lot better? Compare this line head with this line head. This was just an earlier, this is your brain beginning to wrap around it. So there's several things going on here. One is your, your hand is establishing more of a connection with your brain and your eye. And then the more time you spend with a lion, the more that your lions go from looking like this to looking like this, right? So if you were to stop at this lion, you'd never get to this lion. But this lion is this lion because this lion is this lion. You need to, this is the route to that. So you'll see the more that you spend time just looking at, at any subject, the more it is going to start to, it's going to start to, 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 to work for you. So now you're all warmed up and um, you, by the time you're at the, the hippo pool, and you're, you're just, you're just, you're grooving. And the first few hippos may be, this page I sort of started drawing at the top and kind of worked my way down. Um, and you'll see that as you get closer towards the bottom, I mean, that's a solid hippo. That's a good hippo moment going on. And so these hippos, these are your, your training hippos. These hippos are your sacrificial pancakes to be able to make this hippo, right? And this happens because this happens. But if you beat yourself up because you didn't like the way a hippo came out up here, you'd stop drawing and you don't get to this hippo. So the same thing actually happens on an even larger scale. So this is within one day, right? You're seeing this arc of your drawing start off a little bit funky in the morning and the more you're drawing all day, the more you're connecting with it. And then with any individual subject, the same arc happens within that. You start off with funkier hippos and they work their way into better hippos. But the same thing is actually going on on an even bigger scale. All right, so here are some drawings of birds. You are and you're going to be, for the next month, making tons and tons of drawings. These are how the drawings are starting at the start. And look at the sort of the, we'll zoom in here on one of these weaver finches. All right. And here is, here's a little fire finch. All right. So then what happens is, Every day, of course, has its own arc, right? Every day you're going to kind of, some things will, will, will develop, some things will get better. Um, but also from day to day, you're going to start improving. So the more that you're regularly doing this, what happens is you're not starting at the same place each day. What happens is you are building your skills, right? So we're gonna see some hammer cops later on. Let's take a look at, um, here it is uh, 612, that's our date, All right? Hammer cops are these, the, the, these birds with these kind of funky angle in the head, beak, um, odd large head, and they make the largest nest of any bird in the world. Here's my little hammer, poof, poof, right? And they've got this cool hammer head. We're gonna see some hammer cops later on in this journal. And what we're gonna do is compare how my brain is thinking and observing here with how, what, how, it, how it develops later, right? So um, here are some drawings. And I'm just gonna, now I'm grabbing a, a chunk of pages here and I am fast forwarding, all right? So you see time passes. And because I'm making, uh, now each morning, I am starting actually in a better place. I am, the birds are, are feeling more birdy because I just have been drawing a lot and my brain is, is, is synced up, it's in the groove. So 
every morning, I still, every day, I still have that same arc with sacrificial pancakes in the morning. But as you're drawing and drawing and drawing, your drawings are improving. You're getting better. You're getting better. You're getting better. So if you said to yourself, like, oh, man, I don't like, I don't like this bird back here, right? The proportions on this kingfisher, that just... Uh, it's not it's not right for me I'm I guess I can't draw if I stop here right then I'm not I'm not getting back this way so what you want to do is give yourself permission to to work through more pages make lots and lots of drawings and that's how the drawings start to get better and better and better it's a numbers game and the, the, the faster I fill up this journal, then the more I am going to be, I'm going to be developing these skills. Let's see if we can find a hammer cop down this direction. Um, oh, here's, here's, here's better proportioned kingfishers, all right? And look, I'm getting three-quarter view angles, looking up the back of the head of these kingfishers. Um, and it's the same species as I saw before, but these, these drawings have a lot more nuance in them. I wasn't just kind of covering everything up with some black watercolor. Uh, where's my little hammer cop? Where? My kingdom for a hammer cop. Ah, oh, there's a hammer cop. All right, so now, here's a hammer cop later on. All right, wow, what a big change. Let's see what date, or so now we're on 718. So there's been, um, I've had a number of days of practicing more birds, but this is, you know, arguably a more sophisticated, nuanced hammer cop. And this happened because, where was my buddy back here? Oh, where is that bird? Oh, there it is. All right. So this bird happened because there is this much, this many pages between this hammer cop and this hammer cop. That's the power of, of, of drawing another bird and drawing another bird and drawing another bird. It's yes and. And so there is no masterpiece. When I did this, okay, this is my best hammer cop. All right, you keep drawing, right, and you get a better hammer cup, right. That's that's what is the that's the secret here. It is the sacrificial pancake. So if I want if I want a fluffy pancake with blueberries embedded in the matrix, I have to be willing to have one of these making one of these. Don't stop here. Keep filling that journal. And what happens next? And what happens next? And what happens next? That, that is what keeps us going. And don't think of it, don't judge yourself based on a drawing now. You're just looking at one point in your process. You're looking at one point in a single day. This is the first drawing of the day. Don't judge yourself, right? Make another and make another. And what's it going to be like next week? What's it going to be like after that? What's it going to be like after that? It's not like you get to some point and then you're an artist. Your brain is constantly changing and developing new neurons if you continue to challenge to challenge yourself and to try like, I'm going to try the hammer cop from this angle, now this angle. And you keep yourself just a little bit on edge, not just in your comfort zone, like I can draw the hammer cop, I'm going to draw it from this like one pose that I get. You keep pushing yourself. You're always a little bit off balance and your brain's going like, whoa, whoa. And as a result, your brain will make new synapses, new neural connections that make the whole process of drawing better and better and better. So within a single day, this is going to happen. There's going to be the sacrificial pancakes, right? Um, 
within a within a journal you're going to be able to see yourself developing and developing and developing go back and look at some older journals your early stuff and you're going to see that wow i've changed a lot and pat yourself on the back celebrate that celebrate that change but right now um there's we tend to think of like where we are right now is like and i've arrived this is this is the height like we think of you think about your political, socio-political sensibilities. Like where you are right now, we feel like I've got the answers. Mm -mm. Because you actually had a different perspective on a lot of things 15 years ago. And you had the same subjective feeling of being right then. Right? 15 years from now, if we have all the same socio-political opinions about things, we're also not paying attention. The same is true with our, our drawing and journaling. Right? You're not at the, this isn't it, right? You're just, you're a little point traveling and you got to keep traveling, keep traveling, keep traveling because, because what's it going to be like in a year from now? You're going to have all these other skills. That's the way your brain works. That's the beauty of neuroplasticity, of the real way your brain works. It changes over time based on the work and effort you put in. So don't be put off by the sacrificial pancake. When, any, when you see your sacrificial pancake, like, okay, sacrifice, I know what you are. You're my, you are, you're, you're my warm up. I'm just getting going. So get those sacrificial pancakes out of the way fast. Like, okay, I know I'm gonna make some weird drawings at the start of this day, just boop, 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 boop. Kind of get, there they are, get them going. And don't judge yourself about that, all right? Just keep it going, keep it going, keep it going, keep it going. There's no masterpiece, it's just a process, all right? And that's part of what makes it so much fun. So keep sketching. Keep observing. Keep playing in nature. Use words, pictures, numbers together to get all these exciting discoveries down. Celebrate life and take care of each other. Take care of the planet. Thank you very much. I'm John Muir Laws, and this was Exploring the Sacrificial Pancake.